Hi everybody, welcome. I am Sean Neufer and today we're going to talk about hand-drawn illustrations for Canvas. I'm going to demonstrate this effect using this Canvas course. What I have is, it looks like hand-drawn animation illustrations here, the text. It adds kind of a personal, colorful effect to it, and then I have some icons. And I did this entire page using only PowerPoint and some very simple HTML in the HTML editor and I'm able to add a unique individual flair for my students here. This would be a sample syllabus page, for example, but I think it comes off as very unique and very interesting for the students, as much as a syllabus page can be. So let's walk through how I created this page. So I'm over here in PowerPoint, and you can see the slides that I created for that page. I'm gonna show you how I created those slides. So let's look at this concept. I'm going to insert an image, first of all, from stock images. Now you can grab illustrations from various places on the internet. There are plenty of free resources. If your institution has Office 365 as a subscription, then you would be able to access their stock photography, including illustrations that they've created. So I'm gonna do a search. Let's search for maybe science. And you can change the color schemes of these if you want. I'm just gonna select this one right here. And that looks good. If I wanted to change the colors, I could go to graphic format. You can fill in unique colors for that if you want. You can also go to the design ribbon and make sure you have the color scheme that you want. Perhaps you've created a color scheme or you want to use one of the built-in stock ones. That's all fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some text. And I'm going to say space with an exclamation point. Now I want to choose a text that's very block-like. So let's scroll down and preview some of these, maybe something like this block text right there. And then I'm going to increase the font, make it really big. And then I can move this around on the page and you can determine how big do you want the, these elements here. I'm gonna keep going a little bit bigger. Yeah, maybe that's good. So this could be good. Now, I'm in the end, I'm going to save this as an image but you can determine, you don't have to save all of this white space, so just be mindful of that. You can also change the dimensions of the slide if you want to fit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the text fill. I'm gonna click the eyedropper tool and I want to fill it with the same color as the background. Now here's the trick. I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to put a shape and you can insert any shape that you want. It can be a circle rectangle, it doesn't really matter. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that and then I'm going to hold shift down and select the text box. So one's a shape, one's a text box. I can edit the text. I'm going to go up to the shape format and to merge shapes and I'm going to fragment. And what that does is it converts my text box. So this is no longer text. I can't edit that. That's an image. And I can delete that shape and then I'm going to delete all of these fragmented pieces from inside the letters. So now what I have are actual shapes and I can move the shape around individually if I want. Now I think that I changed the color prematurely, so I'm going to go back and fill this again. I'm going to fill it. I can choose my most recent thing, or I can click the eyedropper tool, and I can fill it some kind of shade or color from this image right here. Now I'm going to right-click. I have all of those selected. I'm going to format object, and on I have the fill options here. On the line options, I'm actually going to create a border around those shapes. So I'll choose a width of maybe something like four, how does that look? You can choose, I don't know, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, and then the sketch style. By default, it's a straight line around the border there. And I'm gonna choose something a little bit more wavy. So perhaps this curved one. And now you can see that it adds that individual unique flair. I'm gonna change the color of the outline. Let's um, use the eyedropper tool and let's choose something maybe from this image, like one of these dark grays. Yeah, so that looks pretty fun. Let me scoot this over just a tiny bit. I'm going to hold shift so that it stays in the line there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle around this because I see that the space, it has some fun wavy lines around it. And you can change. So these are shapes. And so notice as I change it, it moves the lines around there too. So you can tinker around with that to get the shape and the outline that you want just right. And I can change the spacings a little bit maybe make it a little less perfect. That's the whole point of this interaction is that I'm making it individual and less perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw a shape. I'm gonna to go to insert, I'm gonna to go to circle, and I'm going to draw a circle right around that planet. I'll hold shift so it's a perfect circle. 
and yep, let's put it right on top of there, just about like that. Okay, so now I have this shape, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select any one of these letters from the space. I'm going to go to Home, and I'm going to go to Format Painter, and then I'll just apply that interaction. So what it did is it copied all of the elements that I did, so the color fill, the outline um, color, and the thickness, and the wavy lines. And then I'm going to go up to Format Shape, and I'm just going to go to Shape Fill. I'm going to delete the fill. So now what I have is this interesting circle that fits right around the edge of that illustration. And I can adjust this a little bit if I want. could rotate it, maybe. So now I have something interesting, and I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and select those, press Control G, or right click, and I'm going to group them together. And I'll do the same for these. Maybe are there any last minute adjustments that I want to make? Perhaps I want to change the E or the C, change the spacing slightly so you can touch that up and then I'll go ahead and group all of these together. So now I have two groups and then I can group all of these together as well. So any last minute adjustments. All right, now I'll group those. So this is all one thing and I'm going to save it as a picture. And you can see the other images that I saved in order to create that page. I'm going to call this space. Now, I like saving it as a PNG as opposed to a JPEG because when you save it as a PNG, then it doesn't save any of this white element behind you. Any of the slide is it's all transparent. And so all I'm saving are the elements that are there. And if this was a JPEG, then it would take this rectangle and it would put a white background behind it. And the reason why I wouldn't want that, if I hop back over to my course, then you can see that I have this image right here, course goals. And if I had a JPEG instead of a PNG, then this would be a white box sitting on top of the colored. And I just want this to sit on top of the, this would be a div that's colored here. And so I want that to be transparent. And the only way you can get an image with transparency in the background is if you save it as a PNG or if you save it as a GIF. So I'll go ahead and keep this as a PNG and save it. And now I have an image that's ready to upload if I want. Now one last thing I could do, I have this space here. What I did is I double clicked on it. You can use whatever photo editing app you have. I'm using Microsoft Photos. I actually don't like this at all. I think that probably Photoshop is better. But what you'll want to do is, if you want, is to trim this down. So I'm going to trim it just to get rid of all that space around there. And if I did want space around in Canvas, I would just use padding or margins to create that space. All right, so you get it just how you want it, and then I'll go ahead and save that. And now I have a picture that's ready to upload into Canvas. So what I'm gonna do now is I have all of the slides. These are the things that I created, but right now it's still in the text box stage. And so what I need to do is convert all of the, these text boxes to shapes, format the shape. So I'm going to color them. I'm gonna put an outline around them. I'm gonna thicken that outline, make it wavy. I'm gonna change the color so that it matches the icons here and then save it as a picture. I'm gonna speed myself up a little bit. I'll put some music that you can enjoy, but that's basically the process that I'm gonna do right now and I'm just gonna do it really fast. You know, I'm going to pause actually and show you a trick that will make this a lot easier for me and for you. So I'm going to hop back over to this slide. Now I already have a lot of formatting established. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these characters here. And so I have the color, I have the border, all of that information. I'm going to go to Format Painter in the home and I'm going to double click on that. And then I'll go back to this slide and I'm just going to click each one of these guys keeps the size, but then it changes all those colors. And that's going to save me just a little bit of time. And again, if I wanted to go back and adjust any one of these, then you can make those minute just adjustments if you want. For example, one adjustment that I think might be a good touch is right here for psychology. I have two O's and those are exactly the same. If I were to adjust one just slightly, then you'd be able to see that the O's are a little bit different. And that gives it maybe a little bit more of that handwritten feel, like that this is art. This isn't just some computer program that's putting out this stuff, that the characters are individual. And I don't know, maybe that's important. I think that adds an extra touch. All right, so let's uh, play back some more music and speed things up a bit.
done. So at this point, I have all my slides set up and I can go in and adjust these. I can change these pixel by pixel. I can adjust the icons. For example, for this one, I have consumer psychology with a large illustration and this takes up a lot of vertical real estate. If I wanted, I could shrink this down maybe and have it more a little bit more on the horizontal x-axis. So I'm going to select these components and I'm just going to move them around. Yeah, it might be difficult in reality to get all of this on the same plane here, but maybe I can bump this down or shrink the font or I can widen the screen. I can make this a bit more of a wide graphic. So however you want it, then once it's all set up, then I would go ahead and group all of these things. So I usually use control G or you can select group and then I would save it. So go in and tinker with the individual icon or with the individual characters to get that exactly how you want it, space it out. Again, the, the colors, I'll revisit with this graphic. If I wanted, I could change the fill to something else, maybe something in my template or something more colorful. And then I could select all of these here and I can go to shape, shape fill. It'll remember the last thing I filled with so I can change all of that at the same time. So get your branding. What color scheme do you want for your course or do you need to adhere to an institutional color scheme? You want to determine those colors, make sure everything's spaced, and then save it as an image. I would right click on my PC, save as a picture. And then for this one, I will just put red overview so that we can see it with the other ones. Now let's hop back over to Canvas. How I would put all of those in, because I have several here. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six images that I want to put on this page. And I can go into edit page and I can upload those one by one as I'm going through. But I think a better approach is to go into your class files and create a folder for those images. Now for me, I have them under images and then hand drawn images. So create your folder, create your place for it, and then select the images that you want to upload and just drag them in all at once into your Canvas course. I think that that's really the best approach. Make sure you have them titled the way you want and you're gonna to have to go in one by one and adjust the copyright. And so since I created these, I hold the copyright and it's fine for me to use them. So go ahead and save that. And then I can hop back over to my page in the edit. And then what I would do is just upload images that are course images. Now I could do this where I upload image by image one at a time and then I can go back into files afterwards and organize them. But since I just put them all in my Canvas course, I'm going to go to Canvas Images. It's gonna sort by the date added so I can see these most recent ones right here. And then I would just click on the image that I want. Another thing I'll show you is that some of these are sectioned. So Course Goals is one that has a section. And we're looking at some simple HTML. I created a div and I put some background color. I didn't want it to be too dark but I use the color from my text here. I have a, a program on my computer called Instant Eyedropper, but there are other plugins for your browser or programs for your computer where you can select the color from your screen. So I'm gonna grab this color, and then what I did is I went to a program called Coolers, and if you've seen some of my other videos, then you might have seen this showcased before. But I'm gonna click on Generate, and I'm gonna put my HTML color right in here. So I'll go ahead and paste that. Now there's the color, it's a shadow blue, but what I wanted to do is find a lighter shade of shadow blue. And so I see a range of shades, and then you can click on one of these. So what I want to ensure is that this would look good with black text on top of it. If it's too dark, then that's fine. I can create a dark shade. I just need to make sure that it has white text on it so that there's a good amount of contrast and we can read it. And so once I get this code, I'm gonna copy that and I'll head back over to Canvas and we're gonna create a section with that color right there. So let's go into the HTML editor and what I want to do is create a div. Now this div has an ID and I'll talk about that in a second. I created those buttons at the top of the page. I want my students to be able to click on a button and go to a specific section. And so that's what this is talking about, but we're gonna ignore that for right now. What I have here is some style. So a div is nothing until you put something into it. It's kind of like a water balloon where it doesn't really have much of a shape until you put water in it and then it becomes that shape. And so what I'm doing is I have this div and I put a background color and that color is whatever I got from coolers, the light shade of blue. And then I put some padding and some margins around it. And that's my div. So this is the div right here. The div inside of it has a picture 
and the picture is floating to the left and then it has a margin on the right of 50 pixels. So I don't want the text on the page to come right up against the picture. I want a little bit of space. And then I said, I want this picture to be 100% the width of the screen, except I want it to have a max width of 300 pixels, which means on small devices like phones and maybe small tablets or something, they're gonna see the picture and then the text is going to be under the picture as the, the canvas page scales to incorporate everything but on a large monitor like what we're seeing right here, I want this to be no larger than 300 pixels wide. I think that's plenty, but then when it gets small, then it'll still be 100% wide. And then I just have some text. So you'd replace this text with what you want. And this is how I get that div, that section, the blue section. So again, I'm saying that this is a shade of blue. It has some padding, some margins. And we have other videos that talk more in depth about the concept of padding and margins and what that looks like and how that renders. But I'm essentially saying that on the top and the bottom, I want to put 25 pixels. So I want some space between this section right here and that section right there. On the left and the right, I don't need any space, but on the top and the bottom, I do. And then the padding just says from the edge of the div to the content, I want there to be a little bit of space. So here is my div. You can see those pixels. I put some space from the top of it to the previous section and then a little bit of space from the bottom to the, pre to the following section. And then I put a little bit of padding. It just added a tiny bit of space around the edges, but I do want the div to go clear to the edge. And if I minimize the side navigation, you can see that a little bit better in effect. So a little bit of space top and bottom, a little bit of space on the inside around there. And then this image, remember I put some space to the right, I think 50 pixels I put, I didn't want the text to come right up against it. I want to have a little bit of room to breathe. And so that's how I created this section. And then this section right here is the same thing, except for the image, instead of floating on the left, I pushed it to the right. So it's floating to the right of the text. And then I put some margin on the left side because I didn't want the words to run right up against it again. Some margin on the top and the bottom padding all around. And then the other thing I said that I would look at it, I've created some buttons at the top of the page here, and these are clickable. I can navigate to certain places on the page. I could put a link to return back to the top. I didn't do that because I just didn't want to clutter up this page too much, but it might be a good practice. So if I click on requirements, it'll take me right to the requirements section. So let's look really quickly at how I did that. And I have another video that talks all about hyperlinking and creating a table of contents for your page. But essentially I have a button here. So an anchor with the class of BTN large, BTN info and BTN, three different classes. I put a little bit of margin around them, just four pixels, not a big deal. I changed the background color and then I put an href equals and in between the quotation marks, I put hashtag section underscore one, section two, section three, section four, and then the words that are inside the button. So the button's hyperlinked and when they click on the button or on the words, it'll take them to that unit. So you click on requirements, that'll take them to section three. And I can see at the bottom right here, I have a div with section three. So that's where it will take them. And there you go. This should get you started on creating some really interesting text and illustration effects when your Canvas course. I wanted to show you this so that you can add some individual flair. Make sure that your students know that this course is yours, that you're a teacher, you're unique, they're unique, and that they deserve fun individual interactions and that this class wasn't just created by some robot. So if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all of my subscribers. And you can visit us on social media. I'll also have a write-up about everything I covered here on my blog post on the website howtocanvas.com. And there you can see some of our other tutorials and write-ups as well. And give me some feedback too. Leave a comment below if you have any ideas, any applications, any fun things that you thought of as you were walking through this with me. If you've integrated this into your course and you want to share it with me, and if your course is public, then please leave the link there too. I'd love to see what you're doing. So that's it for today. Everybody, happy teaching and learning.